Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some practical ways you can use the AI Assistant in Splunk Observability Cloud. The Assistant will only get better with time, but today I'll show you real-world, real-time examples of what it can do right now, and how to interact with it to get the most accurate and helpful answers. So I'm currently at the homepage of Splunk Observability Cloud. To access the AI Assistant, I would navigate to the top right and select this icon. This pulls up a window that allows me to chat with the AI assistant. And you can actually begin to prompt the AI by using these queries that are listed here. And this could be a great way to get started with the AI assistant, simply by asking, what can you help me with? And as you can see in the response, the AI assistant has access to metrics, traces, and logs in Splunk Observability Cloud. It can also help you analyze alerts and incidents and draft signal flow programs. We're going to be exploring some of these use cases as well as exploring additional ones that are not listed here. A great way to explore with the AI assistant is to ask it to identify unknown unknowns in your environment. You could treat it like a morning brief when you get into work in the morning. You ask the AI assistant, what should I know about my environment? Or even like a handoff between engineers during on-call rotation where the previous on-call engineer gets the current on-call engineer up to speed with what's going on in the environment. Let's try it out. Now, if we take a look at the response, the AI assistant performs an analysis and then identifies that the payment service has high error rates. It also identifies common error tags like HTTP status code 401, as well as high latency. And it also analyzed the upstream and downstream dependencies of the payment service. And then finally, it made some recommendations based off of its findings. Another cool feature is that it hyperlinks directly to the payment service in APM. So now if I want to investigate that problem further, I can simply select the hyperlink and it will take me to the payment service in APM. Now for this particular example, I happen to know that a new version of the payment service was recently deployed. And I'd be interested to know if the new deployment might be causing high error rates or latency. So let me ask the assistant to compare the current and previous versions of the payment service. Let's take a look at the AI Assistant's comparison. From a latency perspective, you can see that the newest version, uh, version 350.10, has much higher latency than the prior version. And if we scroll down to the error rate analysis, you can see that version 350.10 has a high number of errors, whereas 350.9 has zero errors. And it also points out that the common error with 350.10 is a uh, HTTP 401 status code. Let's take a look at the observations. It points out under the observations that there was significantly higher latency and higher error rates with the new version. And then it provides some recommendations on how to investigate and resolve the issue. I might want to look at specific trace errors in the payment service as well. In my queries to the AI assistant, I'm being specific about the data that I want it to reference. For instance, in this query, I'm referencing the payment service, and I'm also specifying the payment service in the online boutique environment. And then I'm putting a time constraint of over the last 15 minutes. Being more specific in your queries to the AI assistant will make its responses much more effective.
In its response, the AI assistant returns a list of error traces for the payment service and even includes a dynamic link to each of the traces. I'll ask it to provide an analysis of this specific trace. If we scroll down, we can see the response from the AI assistant. The assistant identifies the root cause of the errors as a 401 status code, which is unauthorized access to the Buttercup payment service, which includes an error message and error tags for an invalid request. But it also analyzes the performance of the trace. And I think it makes a pretty good call out about the duration. It says that the duration was relatively short, suggesting that uh, there was an immediate rejection of the request and it wasn't some timeout issue or some latency issue in the network. And it characterizes the service interaction, which I also think is pretty cool because it's explaining how the data is being sent. So it specifies that the payment service is trying to make a charge request to this third-party uh, API, Buttercup Payments, and the request is failing due to an authorization issue. And if you look at the recommendations, it says review the authentication uh, method and ensure that credentials or tokens used by the payment service are valid. And then also provides a couple other suggestions about authorization configuration and error handling. And if I wanna take a look at this specific trace in APM, I can simply select the hyperlink. Not only can we ask the AI assistant to analyze traces and metrics related to our service, but we can also have it look at uh, database performance and specifically database queries. In its response, it provided a list of order IDs, which is not what I asked for. I wanted database queries. So I'm going to try one more time to prompt it with uh, this query here and see if it returns the actual queries, which is what I want. Now in the second response, it actually does return a list of the actual database query names that have a high latency, and it also includes uh, the number of times those queries were executed. Now what about detectors and alert data? I'm going to navigate to detectors and SLOs, and I'm going to click on the critical alerts. And if I scroll down, I can see a list of critical alerts. And I notice that there is a high error rate alert for the payment service. So I'm going to select that alert. And if I scroll down in the alert, I can actually get the event ID of this alert or the incident ID of this alert. I'm going to copy that incident ID to my clipboard. And then I'll ask the assistant to explain the alert and tell me why it was triggered. In its response, the assistant gives me a nice summary of the alert details, as well as an explanation of the triggering conditions and why they were triggered. It also directly hyperlinks to that specific alert. Although I navigated to the detectors and SLOs page to view my alerts, I could also query the assistant about currently triggering alerts.
I like the response to this query because it provides guidance on where I need to focus my attention. If these detectors are frequently triggering, it could indicate a degradation of performance in my services. And on the flip side of that, I think this query is also useful for identifying uh, alerts that might be triggered too frequently and are creating noise that is not actionable. And in that same vein of keeping the house in order or cost control, I might want to ask the assistant about my infrastructure and maybe I want to identify infrastructure that is uh, costly but underutilized. Let's ask the assistant about my Kubernetes infrastructure and whether it's being underutilized. So initially the assistant encountered an error, but it continued answering the prompt. And if we take a look at the analysis, it does identify a node in the uh, online boutique environment that has a CPU utilization below 90%. It's at 73%. And that's an all time high CPU utilization below 90%. Now I wouldn't consider 73% being underutilized, but for the purposes of this example, I wanted to uh, use 90% here. In addition to identifying that node, it also uh, provides some suggestions for optimization. It identifies important attributes about the node, and it even links to the Kubernetes dashboard. In addition to identifying underutilized infrastructure, I could also ask it to identify services that don't have necessary attributes associated with them. So for instance, if I navigate to APM and I open up the payment service, I'll take a look at the tag spotlight and I'm going to search for the tenant level tag. And you can see that the payment service has a tenant level tag with values gold, bronze, and silver. And it might be a requirement for all services in this environment to have that tenant level tag associated with it. Essentially, I can use the AI assistant to audit the data in my environment. So I'll pull the AI assistant back up. In its response, it says that all services have the tenant level tag uh, associated with them. And I know that this is incorrect, so I'm going to reprompt uh, the assistant with this query. I also have this use current page filters toggled, and I'm accessing the payment service, so I'm going to navigate one level up just in case that is impacting its answers. Now in its second response, it does correctly identify the ad service as being a service that does not have the tenant level tag. So on that first prompt, it might have incorrectly answered because I was using the current page filters and it was filtered on the payment service. Let's trust the AI assistant, but verify that the ad service doesn't have the tenant level tag associated with it. And as you can see, the ad service is in fact missing the values for the tenant level tag.
And I think queries like these where it incorrectly answers the question are a good reminder that that is exactly what it is. It's an assistant. It's not a full engineer. It's there to complement uh, your workflow. To summarize, I'd like to recap the use cases that we've demonstrated. Number one being identifying unknown unknowns in the environment. The second use case and one of the primary use cases of the AI assistant is real-time analysis and troubleshooting. This can include things like checking error rates and latency of services, as well as analyzing and comparing deployments and releases of your applications. We also utilize the assistant to perform compliance and cost control in our environment. This can include things like auditing what kind of AWS EC2 instances are running in our environment and whether they're underutilized. These use cases demonstrate the flexibility and the power of the AI assistant in Splunk Observability Cloud. And it will only get better from here. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, we'd love to hear your feedback. And if you're interested in trying Splunk Observability Cloud yourself, you can navigate to this link to claim your free 14-day trial. Thanks for watching.